guys, it's Brandy and Miss Kenosha 2016, and we'll be continuing with our Read It Out series, our first chapter book, Counting by Sevens. And we are on chapter number two. Chapter two starts with two months ago. I'm about to start a new school. I'm an only child. I'm adopted, and I'm different. As in strange. But I know it, and that's what takes the edge off, at least for me. Is it possible to be loved too much? My two parents. Really, truly, L-O-V-E me. I think waiting for a long time for something makes it more gratifying. Correlation between expectation and delivery of desire could no doubt be quantified into some kind of mathematical equation, but that's off the point, which is one of my problems and why, despite the fact that I'm a thinker, I'm never the teacher's pet, ever. Right now, I'm going to stick to the fact. For seven years, my mom tried to get pregnant, and it seems like a long time of working at something since the medical definition of infertility is 12 months of well-timed physical union without any results. And while my passion for all things medical, the idea of doing this, especially with any kind of regularity and enthusiasm, makes me feel nauseated, as medically defined as un an unpleasant sensation of the abdomen. Twice in those years, my mom peed on a plastic wand and turned the diagnostic instrument blue. But twice, she couldn't keep the fetus. How onomatopoeic is that word? Fetus. Insane. Her cake failed to bake, and that's how I came into the mix. On the seventh day of the seventh month, is it any wonder I love that number? My new parents drove north to a hospital 257 miles from their home where they named me after a cold climate tree and change the world, or at least our world. Time out. It probably wasn't 257 miles, but that's how I need to think of it. 2 plus 5 equals 7, and 257 is a prime number. Super special. There's order in my universe. Back to adoption day. As my dad explains it, I never once cried, but my mom did all the way down Interstate 5 South until exit 17B. My mom weeps when she's happy. When she's sad, She's just quiet. I believe her emotion wiring got crossed in this area. We deal with it because most of the time she's smiling very wide. When my two parents finally just finally made it our single story Sitco house in a development at the end of San Juan Valley, their nerves were both shot. Our family adventure had just begun. I think it's important to get the picture of things in your head, even if they're wrong. And they pretty much always are. If you could see me, you would say that I don't fit into an easily identifiable ethnic category. I'm what a person calls, or I'm what's called a person of color, and my parents are not. They are two of the whitest people in the world, no exaggeration. They are so white they're almost blue. They don't have circulation problems, they just don't have much pigment. pigment. My mom has fine red hair and eyes that are pale, pale blue, so pale they look gray, which they are not. My dad was tall and pretty much bald. He is subhedric Demetrius, which means that his skin appears to be constantly in a state of rash. This has led to a great deal of observation and research on my part, but for him, it is no picnic. If you are now picturing this trio and considering us together, I want you to know that while I don't in any way resemble my parents, somehow we naturally look like a family. At least I think so. And that's all that really matters. Besides the number seven, I have two major obsessions, medical conditions and plants. By medical conditions, I mean human disease. I study myself, of course, but my illnesses have been minor and non-life-threatening. I do observe and chronicle my mom and dad, but they, but they will not let me do much diagnostic work on their behalf. The only reason I regularly leave the house, not counting going to forced prison camp, also known as middle school, and my weekly trip to the central library, is to observe sickness in the general population. I would always be, it would always be my first choice to sit for several hours every day at a hospital, but it turns out that the nursing staff have the problem with that, even if you're just camped out in a waiting room pretending to read a book. So I visit the local shopping mall, which fortunately has its share of disease, but I don't buy things. Since I was little, I've kept field notes and made diagnostic flashcards. I'm particularly drawn to skin disorders, which I photograph only if the subject and one of my parents isn't looking. <laughs> my second interest, plants. They're living, growing, reproducing, pushing, and pulling in the ground all around us at all times. We accept that without even noticing. Open your eyes, people. This is amazing. 
If plants made sound, it would be all different, but they communicate with color and shape and size and texture. They don't meow or bark or tweet. We think that they don't have eyes, but they see every angle of the sun and rise of the moon. They don't just feel this wind, they change direction because of it. Because you think I'm crazy, which is a possibility, look outside right now. I'm hoping that your view isn't of a parking lot or the side of a building. I'm imagining that you see a tall tree with delicate leaves and you catch the sight of swaying grass in a wild field. Weeds pushing up through the crack of the sidewalk. You're in the distance somewhere. We are surrounded. I'm asking you to pay attention in a little way and view it all as being alive. With a capital A. <laughs> My hometown, like a lot of Central Valley of like a lot of the Central Valley of California, has a desert climate and is flat and dry and very hot for over half a year. Since I've never lived anywhere else, whole months of days where it is 100 degrees outside seems normal. We call it summer. Despite the heat, there is no escaping the fact that the bright sun and rich soil makes the area ideal for growing things once you add water to the equation, and I did. So where once our house had a rectangle of grass, there is now a 40-foot high stand of timber bamboo. I have citrus trees, orange, grapefruit, and lime next to my year-round vegetable garden. I grow grapes, a variety of vines, annual and perennial flowers, and in one small area, tropical plants. To know me is to know my garden. It's my sanctuary. Sanctuary. <laughs> it's sort of tragic that we can't remember the earliest of the early years. I feel as if those memories could be key to my whole life. Who am I? What was my first nightmare about? How did the first step really feel? What was the decision-making process when it came time to ditch the diapers? I've gotten some toddler memories, but my very first sequence recall is in kindergarten. No matter how hard I've tried to forget the experience, my parents said the place we were going to would be all kinds of fun. It wasn't. The school was only blocks from our house, and it was here that I first committed the crime of questioning the system. The instructor, Mrs. King, had just plowed her way through a popular picture book. It featured the hallmark of most preschool literature, repetition, some kind of annoying rhyming, and bold-faced scientific lies. I remember Miss King asking her class, how does this book make you feel? The appropriate answer, as far as she was concerned, was tired, because the overly cheery instructor forced us to lie down on sticky rubber mats for 20 minutes, lunchtime picture book, after lunchtime picture book. Half of the class usually fell deeply to sleep. I remember distinctly a boy named Miles twice peeing his pants, and with the exception of a kid named Garrison, who I'm certain had some kind of restless leg syndrome. Everybody else in the room seemed to actually enjoy the horizontal break. What were these kids thinking? That first week, while my classmates dozed off, I obsessively worried about the hygiene of the linoleum floor. I can hear Mrs. King's fine, straight, and shrilly voice booming, How does this book make you feel? She then would she then made a few exaggerated yawns. I recall looking around at my fellow classmates thinking, would someone, anyone, just shout out the word tired? I had not uttered a single syllable in my five sessions as a student. I had no intention of doing so. But after days of hearing lies from adults that I'd been exposed to in my whole entire lifetime, everything from how fairies cleaned up the classroom at night to insane explosions of earthquake prepared preparedness kits, I was at some kind of breaking point. So when the teacher specifically said, Willow, how does this book make you feel? I had to tell the truth. It makes me feel really bad. The moon can't hear someone say goodnight. It's 135,000 miles away, and bunnies don't live in houses. Also, I don't think that the artwork is very interesting. I bit my lower lip and experienced the metallic taste of blood. But really, hearing... You read the book makes me feel bad, mostly because I know it means you're going to make us lie down on the floor, and germs there could make us sick, and there's a thing called salmonella, and it's very dangerous, especially to us kids. That afternoon, I learned the word weird I learned the word weirdo, because that's what I was called by the other kids. When my mom came and picked me up, she found me crying behind the dumpster in the play yard. I was taken to see an educational consultant that autumn, and the woman did an evaluation. She sent my parents a letter. I read it. It said I was highly gifted. Are people lowly gifted or medium gifted or just gifted? It's possible that all these labels are curses unless they're the one unless they're the ones on cleaning products. Because in my opinion, it's not really a good idea to see anyone as anything. Every person has a lot of ingredients to make them into a one of a kind creation. 
We are all in perfect genius stews. According to the con the consult according to the consult consultant, Mrs. Grace B. Meerman, the challenge for patients of someone highly gifted was to find a way to keep the child engaged and stimulated. But I think she was wrong. Almost everything interests me. I can be engaged by the arc of water of a sprinkler system. I can look through a microscope for a shockingly long time period of time. The challenge for my parents was going to be to find a friend who could keep up with such a person. All of this led to my garden. Mom and Dad said that they were looking to enrich my life, but I think one thing was obvious from the beginning. Plants can't talk back. And that is the end of chapter two. Hope you enjoy, and we'll read chapter three shortly.